this audio topic, I was learning about active participant steps in. My another question being, um, what practical steps or actions can we take to improve access to healthcare and steps in? So I chose this topic because I have some knowledge on the current situation with steps in. Uh, as in sixth grade, I did some charity work to help raise money um, for access to water and steps in. And for me, access to healthcare um, is a massive privilege, especially if you're in Singapore, we can, where we can get like some of the best healthcare services in the world. But of course, that's not the situation um, in the rest of the world, especially not in South Sudan. So for this per, uh, for this project, I thought my best sources were my interviews because um, not only were I was I able to ask personal questions for um, really good information and perspectives, um, but I was also able to gather. Um, lots of data from the organizations working towards this project. So I'm going to play my podcast from the beginning to help uh, set the scene for the situation. With a life expectancy of 55 years, once being 12 and a half in 1988, it's no question that South Sudan's healthcare system needs a massive upgrade. Welcome to the Health for All Practical Solutions for South Sudan podcast, where we dive into the most pressing issues in healthcare and explore practical solutions. Today's episode is dedicated to answering the driver's question of what practical steps can we take to improve access to healthcare in low-income communities in South Sudan. South Sudan, along with other countries in Central Africa, has one of the lowest life expectancies in the world, with limited access to healthcare being a significant contributing factor. The country has suffered from decades of civil conflict, which has severely impacted its funding for, healthcare, for its healthcare system. There is a shortage of healthcare facilities, medical professionals, and resources, making it challenging for individuals, particularly those in low-income communities, to access quality and basic healthcare services. Moreover, the COVID-19 pandemic had worsened the healthcare crisis in South Sudan, with the country's fragile healthcare system struggling to cope with the increasing demand for medical attention. According to the UN and UNICEF, the lack of access to healthcare services in low-income communities in South Sudan has resulted in preventable illnesses, avoidable deaths, and widespread suffering. In this episode, we'll be discussing practical steps that can be taken to improve access to healthcare in low-income communities in South Sudan. By experts as well as community leaders who have been working towards improving healthcare services in the country, we'll explore innovative solutions that can be implemented to address the healthcare crisis in South Sudan. Joining us today to discuss this critical issue is Alyssa Rally, Director of Communications at Water for South Sudan, an organization dedicated to providing access to clean water to communities throughout the country. Alyssa brings a wealth of experience to this conversation, having worked for several years. She 
one of the worst in the world um, in terms of access to healthcare services. Um, so child mortality is one of the main issues. Um, so it's uh, we have 78 deaths per 1,000 uh, births. Um, so that is definitely one of the problems um, uh, and, and it's mainly due to um, women not being able to access healthcare. So what we do is, um, and that is also m mostly related to this part that I mentioned where we have this, these issues with corruption and fraud, because in the country it's very easy to, um, how should I call it, to, to whenever there's construction, it, there's a high chance that there will be corruption. So as you might have heard in the podcast, um, the new Sassanese government has trouble, um, you know, sorting out how to operate their government, especially when it suffered from the decades of civil conflict, uh, also being the newest country in the world. Um, so moving on to takeaways from this project, um, what did I learn? I learned um, that, you know, we have to be really grateful for what we have here in Singapore with this amazing healthcare system. Um, you know, and I also learned that change is needed, not, e not just in South Sudan, but also other countries in Africa and other countries around the world who don't have the same access to healthcare that we do. So some next steps uh, are keep advocating for change because change is needed all around the world and we can't do it sitting on a couch. And you know, spreading awareness is, you know, kind of the least you can do because people can't help the topic if they don't know about it. And just remember, from evolution to revolution, we are all change makers. And I'm gonna end on a quote from Jane Goodall. What you do makes a difference. You have to decide what difference you wanna make. Thank you. Curious, how did you reach out to these people? Did you cold call them or what? Um, I emailed them. Like, and they replied. Uh, I found their email online and asked Great. if they if they had anyone that they knew that was interested. Fantastic. Yeah, what's cool is that they just go for it, the yeah. students, and sometimes they're going to get a response yeah. and talk to some president of a university, and yeah. sometimes they won't get any response at all. Uh, and Miles was really successful in 